So we've discussed DNA, right? The profound information code that underlies all life. And also that we need this profound information code prior to first life because I need DNA to create the first self-replicating simple creature on planet Earth. Well, the naturalist materialist can, will say that, um, that if you give enough chances, enough time, that you can create this information code just through uh, just a bunch of trial and error. And they use this so-called monkey theorem, right? That if you just had a bunch of monkeys pounding on a, away on a bunch of typewriters for an infinite period of time, or at least a long period of time, that you could write a Shakespearean sonnet, right? You've heard the story. Well, crazy as it sounds, because it's just a metaphor, the actual, the British uh, and a council on, uh, on, on the arts actually tested this in real life. They got six monkeys in a cage for a month with one computer and to see what they would produce. And they probably produced a lot of nasty stuff that we don't need to talk about. But in one month, six monkeys pounding away on one computer created 50 pages of letters. Okay, and guess what? not one word. Now the simplest word would be obviously A or I. Now the simplest word A or I would require three different keystrokes because you have to have a space on either side of A or I to make it a discernible word, correct? So the odds would be one in uh, 27,000 if we were to take a very simple keyboard. Let's say 26 letters, um, a space bar, a period, a comma, and a question mark. So 30 characters, um, 30 times 30 times 30, so that I could get a space, a letter A or I, and a space. So that 30 times 30 times 30 on my very simple keyboard would be one chance in 27,000 to produce one word. They didn't produce any. Okay, now, Take that real life example and let's take it into what would be required for a Shakespearean sonnet. And I go to a great thinker, um, Gerald Schroeder on this. He's an Israeli scientist and author of The Science of God. And here's what he writes. All sonnets are the same length. They're by definition 14 lines long. I picked the only one I knew, the opening line for, shall I compare thee to a summer's day. I counted the number of letters. There are 488 letters in that sonnet. What's the likelihood of hammering away and getting 488 letters in the exact sequence as in Shall I Compare Thee to a Summer's Day? What you end up with is 26, or 26 characters, multiplied by itself 488 times, or 26 to the 488th power, or in other words in base 10, 10 to the 690th. Now the number of particles in the universe not grains of sand, I'm talking about protons, electrons, and neutrons, is 10 to the 80th power. 10 to the 80th is one with 80 zeros after it. 10 to the 690th power would be one with 690 zeros after it. There's not enough particles in the universe to write down the trials. You'd be off by a factor of 10 to the 600th power. Now, why did I go through that mechanism? Well, Schroeder's argument there was a profound argument even for Anthony Flew. Anthony Flew, the seminal atheist from Oxford for the last 50 years, he even wrote the textbook on atheism, The Presumption of Atheism, actually said that this argument was the most profound argument he had ever seen. Because obviously, I cannot create even a Shakespearean sonnet with all of the trials across all the particles in the universe, over all of known time, how can I create three billion precise sequences in the DNA that would be required in the human body? This argument, the refutation of the monkey theorem, was perhaps the most greatest argument in favor of Anthony Flew recently renouncing his atheism only a couple years ago, saying that the evidence for intelligent design was far greater today than when he first encountered it a number of decades ago. And that following Socrates, which he always says he would, he had to follow the evidence wherever it leaded. And in this case, something created genetic information code. It did not create itself.